I wasn't ready for this, okay? I was talking to somebody on Facebook. Well, I had them open on Facebook in an instant message, messenger or whatever. And I got about five or six pages into this. And I started to tear up. And I had to put this fucker down. I I don't even know what to think about this volume. I cried. I raged. I actually talked out loud to myself while reading this. I was listening to this, this I was listening to Disturbed when I was reading this. The first thing that made me tear up was the death, death of Pippin. Seeing him die and Casca seeing it and Casca fighting with Judo telling him to go back. Then Judo dying and saying that he wanted to t tell her one important thing. I'm going to assume it was that it wasn't that she cries too much. It was that, that he loved her or he had feelings for her. Because when he told Guts in the last vine to take Casca with, her, with him, he seemed like really concerned for her. Corcus's death, even though I hate Corcus, the dude didn't deserve to die that, that way being tempted by a woman who is actually an apostle. Um, and then we get to, you know, guts the entire time, struggling to survive and fighting these apostles, these demons, and just being rageful Learning, you know, seeing that Judo's dead, seeing that everybody's dead, Gaston dying in his eye, in his arms. Just. <sighs> Absolutely crazy. I can't even keep it together, man. Nothing. I have never read anything like this. It has me this beat up, man. Kentaro Miura is an absolutely brilliant writer. He showed us what was to come become of these characters in the beginning of the series. And then we go on the journey in the Golden Age arc to see what's going to happen. But I did not expect something like this. He allowed us to get attached to these characters. He allowed us to see the backstory. And then he throws this into the story. Guts struggling, seeing his comrades die. People he grew with. He finally, finally found a place to belong. And this happens all because of Griffith. Somebody who allowed him to find this place where he belongs. If it wasn't for Griffith, Griffith Guts wouldn't have found the Band of the Hawk. And then he does this. And brings them into this nightmare. Absolutely horrific. This was a tragedy. This was pure horror. I still see panels in my head right now. The panel where Pippin shows up. And the back of him is like. You can see like the inside of his body. And then Guts just freaks out. And he's killing all these demons. But then before he can get any farther. He sees Casca there. Completely naked tentacles wrapped around her and he just rages he fucking rages the art and the style and the characterization and the way Kentaro Miura presents his manga his art is incredible and then the reborn Griffith the one known as Femto flies down in front of them and just grabs Casca and starts touching her boobs and her ass and her vagina kisses her neck kisses her in front of guts guts knowing full well this is all because of Griffith watching the woman that he loved the first person he could truly love in his entire life as you know as as an actual relationship like that in an in intimate 
relationship being raped by his former best friend. That scene spanned several pages. Too long. To, too 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 many pages, and I, that I, I I think too many pages. But I understand why he did it. It was so detailed. Femto doing this to Casca and Guts not being able to do anything. Guts' arm getting bit by a thing, and we finally get to see how Guts lost his arm. He cut his own arm off to get to the woman that he loves to try to save her from his former best friend who's now a demon. The Wings of Darkness. And he still couldn't get to her because all the other demons held him down and he forced him to watch Femto rape her. And then Koska even goes and says, don't look, you know, don't look. And then Femto's done, and then we get, you know, somebody to the rescue who... I didn't expect this person to come to their rescue. I mean, the beginning of the, the volume, Zod and the Skeleton King dude, or the Skeleton Knight, are talking. And he calls the Skeleton Knight a, a millennium-old nemesis and his old rival. And Zod even says, I only... I only have interest in the strong or whatever when, you know, the Skeleton Knight says you're guarding the gate. So they've known each other for a long time, they're rivals, and apparently the Skeleton Knight is an enemy of them. So I guess he got turned into an Apostle, and he doesn't agree with what they do. So he fights them. So he rescued Guts and Casca, got away, he even tricked Femto, apparently took off Zod's arm. Apparently he's very, very powerful. And Rickert's out there, and he has that magical, magical like medicine that those those circus people gave him. That Puck was with, and that plays a role to heal guts once again. Judo gave it to him at one one point, gave it to Casca to give the guts, and now Rickert is giving it to guts and Casca, and healing them. And you know Zod and the Skeleton Knight put their little f battle to the side. And, you know, Zod's interested in Guts now. He wants to see how Guts survives in this world of darkness now that he's a brand, you know, a branded, a branded sacrifice for the dead, for the Apostles and whatnot. And then we skip over to him waking up, and he's back with uh, Erica his fa and, and the uh, father in an ore cave. And apparently Rickert, Rickert she calls him Rick, Rick or whatever. She messes up words or whatever. But I have a feeling Rickert and her are going to end up falling for each other. Uh, maybe something happens where Guts has to take Ricker and er Ricker, Erica and Casca along with him on the, on their journey because maybe the father dies or whatever because as we see Guts tries to approach Casca and she doesn't want anything to do with him. She doesn't know who he is, doesn't know who Rickard is. Only trusts Erica. She's completely broken. I mean she was just raped. Rape alone is a very devastating thing for anybody. But she was raped by her former commander, somebody that she loved at one point, who was now a demon, and was done in was raped in front of the man she loves. So she's completely broken. She is not the person she was before. She cannot remember anything. So, you know, Guts in the fit of rage leaves, and apparently the skeleton knight told Rickard to tell him not to leave because he has the brand of sacrifice. And this is when Guts learns that these demons and he's dead and everything is, you know, after him. He is in the world, he's in between two worlds that cannot react with each other, called the Intercise or something like that. And the skeleton, kid, skeleton Knight throws him a really cool looking sword and he starts fighting these dead, you know, these, these dead spirits and whatnot while the Skeleton Knight tells him what's going on. And says, "You're gonna. This is your life now. This is your reality. You're gonna have to fight in this. You know, you're you're, you're a sacrifice. You, you know, your body and every drop of blood in your in that body is meant to feed the dead, to the apostles, etc., etc." And then they disappear. And he's like, you know, while he's fighting, he's like, "I don't give a fuck. Shut your mouth." He's like, "This is my declaration of war." My declaration of war. His goal now, his dream, is to hunt down and kill 
every single apostle and the God hand for what they did. You have to realize he just went through fucking hell and came back, seen his comrades die, seen fucking Gaston die in his fucking arms. Seen his fucking love of his life get raped by his former best friend, and now he just actually went to the love of his life and she doesn't remember him. This dude is filled with rage and pain and suffering and sorrow and anguish. He doesn't he, he just wants to eliminate all and everybody responsible for this. And I can see why he becomes the person he is at the beginning of the series, you know, when he's the black swordsman. But then they disappear, and, you know, he's like, oh, they're scared of me or whatever. And the skeleton knight says, they found another torch. They found Casca. So this is my prediction here, if I could think logically. They're going to get there maybe too late, and Casca might die. Or the old man might be fighting for them, because he might not have, have some kind of skills. I mean, he is a blacksmith. And maybe he protects them, but he dies in the process. And Guts has to take Erica, Ricker, and Casca with him somewhere. And it's going to be like them escaping and finding a safe place for them to, to you know, lay low while he goes off on his journey to eliminate the Apostles and God Hands. And apparently, I guess the Skeleton Knight is going to help Guts. I have a feeling the Skeleton Knight dude is going to train Guts to be a better swordsman. Train him how to do what he does earlier in the manga series. Um, maybe he's going to be a mentor in the guts or something. I don't know. I guess we'll see what's going to happen. But I threw this line. I don't know where it is. I don't know where it is. I threw it because I was so pissed. And I'm, I just, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. You know, volume, volume 12 had a lot of crazy shit in it. But this is when the shit hit the fan. This is when everything gets, you know, tied up with a bow tie, a very, very dark and bloody fucking blow, bow tie, you know, very, you know, not good, not good, I, I've never felt, like I said, I've never, ever, 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 ever felt anything like this while reading a manga, or reading a book in general, even watching something in an anime series, I've never felt like this, sorrow, I fucking cried, I raged, I, I just... That's all I have for you guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hit the like button if you feel I deserve it. Subscribe if you want to see more Berserk reviews because I will be continuing this, but I don't think I'm going to read volume 14 for about two weeks or so because I have to get over what just happened in that volume. Absolutely Berserk is probably one of the best series I've ever read in my life. And that volume 13 just proved it and cemented that point. This is the best series I've ever read in my life. It's at least in my top five manga series. Absolutely incredible. Never, ever has anything ever made me feel this way. This many emotions. Like, I have a spectrum of emotions just flowing through me. I'm probably going to have fucking nightmares over this shit, man. Alright, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I'll catch you in the next review.